I'm a PhD candidate in history at the Lucianbaga University of Sibiu in Romania, as well as a museum curator in the Bukentan Museum in Sibiu. And today I'm going to present a part of my uh, PhD research, uh, the, uh, which I started in uh, 2013 and I'm going to finish in 2016 in October. So the aim of my research uh, is uh, to reconstruct the scientific biography of archaeologist Zofia Torma in the cultural, social, and political context of 19th century Transylvania. Uh, before uh, starting uh, the paper, I will make a general introduction. So first of all, I should introduce uh, Zofia Torma. So who is she? She is a Hungarian pioneering archaeologist of 19th century Transylvania, about whom very few things were known. I can now say that were known. Previously, I said that are known. Now I can say that were known after researching. Uh, and she had an important role in the development of prehistoric archaeology in Transylvania. And here you can see the only, uh, her only known photograph. I mentioned that Sofia Dorma lived in Transylvania. So Transylvania is a historical region in Romania. It is located in the central part of the country. However, during Sofia Dorma's life, uh, Transylvania belonged to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And this is why her activity must be discussed in the context of uh, Hungarian archaeology. So why is Sofia Dorma important? Why is it important to research her? Well, firstly, because uh, she is the first woman known to be involved in archaeology on the territory of today's Romania and Hungary. She is also the first person who excavated the Neolithic and Copper Age settlement of Tudlas Lunga, which is one of the most important prehistoric sites in today's Romania. So in order to familiarize you with the geography of the region, uh, the site of Tudlas Lunga is located in southwestern Transylvania on the left bank of the Mugres River. Um, her, Jofia Torma's researches were, um, uh, had amazing results. In a very short amount of time, she managed to um, create an archaeological collection, uh, which um, towards the end of her uh, life comprised over 10,000 objects. And uh, this collection is still a reference point for today's archaeologists. Uh, she is also known for her extremely vast scientific correspondence, which allowed her to develop a large and strong academic network. And uh, knowing uh, that this scientific correspondence exists was a good starting point for my research. And it actually, allowed me, it actually allowed me to find out a lot of interesting information about the knowledge production and the knowledge exchange um, in 19th century, uh, between 19th century Transylvania and uh, the rest of Europe. So she corresponded with Hungarian scholars, with German and Austrian scholars. I will only mention Heinrich Schliemann, Johannes Ranke, Matthäus Much, Albert Voss, and Paul Reinecke. And also British scholars such as John Lubbock, uh, Lubbock uh, Henry Says, and Francis Haverfield. There are also French archaeologists and um, uh, Serbian ones, but uh, I will not mention them now. Uh, my <laughs> there's not enough time. So, uh, what are my main sources? Uh, mostly archival documents. Uh, secondly, 19th century and 20th century scientific publications. 19th century Hungarian German press, and I've also added the interviews. These actually belong to the second part of my um, to the second part of my uh, thesis, but I thought it would be interesting to mention them. I've also I've started an oral history project, and I'm interested in comparing uh, the attitudes uh, towards the site of Tudas Lunga in the 19th century and today among um, the scientific community, among archaeologists. So what I did is that. Um, I contacted the persons who participated um, on the excavations at Turdash Lunka between 1992 and 1998, as well as in 2011, and I conducted several interviews. So this includes my supervisor, who was the um, uh, who is leading the excavations, and uh, also archaeologists. Many of them were students, so it's interesting to see how the site um, formed their formed them as archaeologists. 
So the aim of my paper is to present the archives and the archival documents, my experience of working in archives and with archival documents uh, from the perspective of a museum's worker, so uh, from my perspective as a curator. So um, uh, I selected several aspects which I considered to be uh, important for me to present today. So um, I will talk about the differences and similarities between archival materials and uh, between the institutions which host the, the materials that I studied, about problems that I encountered in archives, about the main results of my research, and lastly about digital collections and public engagement, because as a curator I, will, I, I always have to think about the public. So, uh, during my research, uh, I've worked in institutions from Romania and Hungary. There are seven institutions. Uh, there are more across Europe, but um, due to the short amount of time, just three years for a PhD research, I've only managed to visit these seven institutions. There are also other institutions, for example, in Russia, that cause documents concerning Jyotia Goma, in Oxford, for example, the Ashmolean Museum. So uh, these institutions are quite di uh, dispersed, as you can see. I won't enumerate them. Uh, it's important to uh, remember that there are three national museums, one county museum, one county archive, uh, and one national library. So it's interesting to see how all these institutions um, uh, treat these documents and um, so during my work, I managed to identify over 1,000 documents which were written by Jofia Torma to Jofia Torma, or that include her name. Uh, the most relevant documents are located in the county archive in Transylvania. Uh, there are more than 500 documents which uh, comprise detailed information about her scientific and personal life. And the other six institutions hold less documents and the information uh, comprised in these documents is mostly about Sofia Torma's scientific activity. So, but each institution is important from a certain point of view. So for example, some hold her uh, final letters, some her draft letters, and some letters from scholars. Uh, and they, each, uh, they all complete each other. So there is a great variety of documents, such as letters, draft letters, manuscripts, diaries, genealogical paper, uh, tables, receipts, name cards, and others. Uh, all these seven institutions are public, which means that in theory and according to the law, they are available to anyone for research. However, when going to these institutions, several problems occur. So uh, uh, theoretically, the access procedures are quite easy, both in Hungary and Romania. But in Romania, sometimes uh, these procedures are overcomplicated over, over by the stuff because in some museums, collections are sometimes treated as personal properties by curators. <laughs> and uh, the uh, research rules are, are very strict, both in Hungary and Romania, and for example, concerning uh, the, digit uh, the um, uh, copying of materials. Uh, however, these rules are very often not respected in uh, Romania. Uh, in Hungary, some documents are digitized and av available to anyone, while in Romania, none of the documents is digitized. So, as you can see in this chart, the th I'm very interested in the state of preservation of these documents. So, as you can see in this chart, uh, their state of preservation is uh, good in general, then very good and relatively good, and there are only two deteriorated uh, documents. Uh, however, uh, I, I mentioned that these documents are in a very good state of preservation, but during my work I observed several problems regarding the storage, the preservation, and the um, uh, recording of these documents. And these might create problems in the future and affect the documents. So for example, these are very simple things, the packaging materials such as boxes and folders are deteriorated, uh, which means that the documents um, are not protected from physical damage such as uh, from dust, from dirt, from light uh, and humidity. They are overfilled, up, they are overfilled, overfilled folders, uh, the boxes or the folders are not clearly labeled, documents are missing, uh, they are not marked with the, uh, reference codes, which means that they officially do not exist, and this means that they can easily disappear. Uh, other problem is that there is no guidance provided for document handling, because not all persons are researchers, and there is also poor supervision of persons who study these documents, which means that they can 
and, and in fact, take the documents and leave the institution. Uh, I know cases when it happened. So what are the main results of my research? So uh, the archival documents helped me in um, uh, observing that Sofia Torma developed an efficient marketing strategy in order to disseminate her researches and finds through attending congresses uh, and through her correspondence. Uh, she also donated archaeological materials to scholars and institutions across Europe. Uh, for example, I have the possibility to reconstruct the path of her donations from her house until the shelves of the museum, so I exactly know where these objects were displayed and how. Uh, and for example, in case of her publications, I can, uh, the uh, documents offer me valuable information about the process of a publication in the 19th century because it was very difficult to publish and the illustrations were very expensive so there are letters which explain that uh, they contain advice from one scholar to the other uh, regarding the paper on which uh, these illustrations should be produced and where should they be printed. Uh, there is a strong connection between Jules Thomas' personal and professional life. Uh, and uh, I also find little information about her experience as a woman in a male-dominated scientific community. And what's very important is that her, uh, I've noticed that her activity must be analyzed in the context of uh, nationalism. Uh, I'm going to skip this because there is not enough time. Um, as a curator, I am very interested in what happens outside the academia. So um, I've, also, I've noticed that in the recent years there has been an increasing interest in Jules Piotrma's activity. So uh, there are people who undertake, uh, outside the academia, who undertake their own research about Jules Piotrma in the archives. Uh, there is one person who created a, web, a, a website for her. Uh, there are persons who, write, persons who write online articles about her. However, the problem is that the discourse in this article is uh, strongly nationalist and they decontextualize and they misinterpret her uh, theories and finds uh, and they offer a distorted version of history and consequently they misinform them and, and uh, mislead the public. Uh, I've also received several emails in the last three years request, uh, from people requesting information about uh, her. So my conclusion is that uh, the public is in need, is in need for knowledge, knowledge about Sofia Torma. So my question was, how can I respond to the public's need uh, in an engaging way? And it occurred to me that a digital collection might be a good solution because uh, a digital collection allows us to inform the public, to educate the public, to engage the public. It allows us to preserve the documents, to offer wider access to the documents, and to um, enable and make future research easier. So actually, a digital collection would answer to all the problems uh, that I've uh, presented before. Uh, so my, um, I will um, end my presentation with three questions, which we might debate in the discussion part. So can archives help archaeology become more open and participatory? And if yes, can digitization projects and digital collections be a solution? And if yes, how can we engage people in such projects? Thank you for your attention.